Welcome back everybody. So today we are going to be stocking our new pond with some forage fish. So it should be an exciting day. It's a little chilly out there. The weather was wet last night. So as you'll see in the video here, uh, the truck couldn't get down to our pond. Um, so he had to park it up by the uh, highway and we used a UTV um, to uh, haul a 55 gallon drum down as close as we get to the pond. And uh, the gentleman, Logan, who works for uh, Curtis uh, Harrison at Harrison Fishery. Um, he unloaded a 55 gallon drum into five gallon buckets. So then he took those buckets and he uh, carried them down to the pond and released the fish. So leave your comments. I'm interested to hear, um, you know, what I've seen on YouTube. Um, I see people, you know, they'll take and go to their local fishery or something and, uh, um, or maybe the farm supply store and, you know, get, you know, a couple hundred minnows, a couple hundred shiners, or maybe 50 bluegill. But, um, I didn't see much out there on uh, um, going ahead and getting a fishery and bringing a truck in, you know, and, and doing the numbers we're doing on this pond here. So hope this leads to a trophy bass pond. Uh, again, like I said, leave your comment. And if you've done this before, I'd be interested to hear. Thanks. So in this first video right here, you're seeing um, this is the minnows and shiners. Uh, we did not get the filming of him unloading, unloading them out of the truck, but um, it's basically going to be the same way as, we, as the rest of the fish, but anyway, um, this is just, like I say, this is started. You can see how many in that bucket. He just filled that bucket full. In fact, I don't <laughs> think he can put them all in there. That's a lot of fish. I'm going to show you how you just kind of... Oops. Whoops, let me <laughs> grab one here. There's the minnows. Here's the shiners. Look at the size of these guys. Yeah, nice That's size. That's all forage. Okay. So here we have Logan, uh, one of the workers for uh, Curtis Harrison for uh, Harrison Fisheries. He's uh, introducing the first batch of minnows and shiners to the pond. Um, some might be wondering, you know, why is he throwing them out there? Well, he doesn't really like to... Uh, release them right there along the shore where he kicks up a lot of dirt and stuff and he's like he told us that that can get into the gills and, and it can kill them so it's easier just to throw them out there and then also some some of you might be wondering about um, why we're we not acclimating the fish there was no need to acclimate them uh, these fish are raised in well water at his uh, fishery so we were just able to uh, release them immediately in the, the water. The temperature of the water was probably 55 degrees that day. The outside temperature was 31 degrees. So there's really no need to um, acclimate them. So here's Logan uh, getting another uh, bucket full of uh, minnows and shiners. Um, I didn't really have any idea how many minnows and shiners were in 30 pounds. But according to Curtis, um, 30 pounds of minnows is about 10,000 minnows. And 30 pounds of shiners is around 5,000. So that's a total of 15,000 minnows and shiners for this pond for this day. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, but this is our third um, trip down with the minnows and shiners. Uh, you can see how many are in this, in this net when he scoops them out of this uh, 55 gallon drum. So as I said before, you know, it's 15,000 minnows and shiners. So quite a few, quite a few trips down there. It's a good thing um, I had the UTV that day uh, because otherwise he would have been carrying those buckets down from the uh, road, which is probably, you know, uh, six, seven hundred yard walk down to the uh, pond. Uh, he could get the truck down there that day. Uh, we just had a rain that night before and the, the pasture was all muddy. So basically we decided we just put the uh, 55 gallon drum in the UTV and, and fill that up with the uh, fish. And he gets down there and scoop them out there and then from there carry the buckets down to the pond. Worked out pretty well that day. So uh, went a little slower we thought because we had to make uh, you know, multiple trips instead of just bringing the truck down there, but um, we got the job done. All right, here comes the catfish. Gotta get water first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, water first, then the catfish. Yeah. How many catfish? 300. 300 wow. catfish. I'm anxious That's to see how big they are. He's all what kind of channel like or? Yeah, channel. Channel, yeah. That's about the only ones that we. I mean. Do people even put bullheads in anymore? Some people do. Do they really? Believe it or not. Yeah. But they're more along the lines for like um, bait ponds. Yeah. 
they'll go out and catch them for bait out on the river. Kind of like, like that little pond like out there. Yeah. You know, I heard there's catfish in that one. Huh? But I, you know, we haven't fished it yet. We haven't right. tried. I don't even know how deep it is. We haven't been out there. We need to check it in depth, you know. That'd be right. So the next photos here you're uh, looking at, um, this is a small pond I was talking about that's on the property. Um, currently, like I said, we've never uh, fished it and maybe at some point we'll uh, have it shocked and, and just see if there's any fish in there. But right now we're just concentrating on the uh, new pond. And if it's like overpopulated with, uh, with bullheads, we do, we don't raise them, but we do sell flatheads. Oh yeah. Yeah, so they'll clean it out. Oh yeah, those guys love bullheads. Yeah, especially around spawn season. It's, it's beauty at that point in time. Bigger net. Uh, this one's treated, so that way the catfish don't get stuck on it as easily. Oh yeah, and they don't tear it up. That's bad. You notice I didn't use a lot of water in this one yeah. just because these guys, they don't really need a lot of water. It's the minnows and shiners that you need more water for um, just because there's so many head per pound. Like minnow wise, you look at anywhere between oh, 4 150 to 500 depending on the size and that's per pound so i don't know if you heard what logan was talking about there but he was talking about the uh per pound minnow count which he said could be anywhere from four to five hundred so you know we have anywhere probably from twelve thousand to fifteen thousand minnows alone not counting the shiners so i'm going to speed it up the rest of this portion right here he's just unloading the rest of the catfish so once it gets down by the pond, I'll slow it back up and that way we can get a look at the catfish. Now as much water as I can. Take the whole blue thing down? Well, just tip it, because oh. believe it or not, as cold as it is right now, they're gonna be hardy to the point I get I can get back up with a uh, with the net, you can get them out. Oh, you, you don't need water, yeah. Water. No, yeah. yeah exactly. oh, It'll be cats are pretty hard. They are. <laughs> I camped out my gloves yet. somewhere over here. Yeah, I don't know what you did with them. as much as a lot of people would think while it's cold like this. So what we'll do is we'll pour the rest of them out. In there. Yep, and then I'll just have you walk down there with the net. All right. And then once I get these guys that are in the bucket out, I'll just walk back and grab the net from you and get these guys out. Look at that. That's nice wow, size nice size. Your mom and dad will enjoy this. <laughs> We're popping. Oh yeah. They get stuck from time to time, but it's not bad. Yep, that's 
sure you don't want a job? <laughs> you look like you've done that before. <laughs> so we're back at the truck now, unloading the uh, bluegill and then red air. Um, this is the first batch up there. Um, I don't know if you notice, uh, every tank he opens up, he'll pull out an aerator. Um, they have an oxygen tank on the back that they uh, con constantly uh, supply oxygen to these fish, you know, until they're out into the pond. So if you are in need of, uh, of um, stocking or restocking your pond and you live in the Midwest, I wouldn't hesitate to uh, call Curtis at uh, Harrison Fishery. I know they um, at least supply fish around the states of Iowa, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, of course, Missouri, and they might go down to Arkansas too, but I know they, they, they cover the Midwest uh, um, pretty much. So. Um, give him a call. I didn't. I didn't get a discount for promoting his company here, but I just, you know, really great guy to work with. We're talking about about six hundred. About six hundred. Five hundred. Oh, per tank. Uh, how many did they have? About five, six hundred. Uh, a thousand. Head. Uh, a thousand. Wow. A thousand. Wow. Wow. Sorry about the truck noise there, but Logan had started the uh, truck up. Uh, so when he gets done there, he can get his hands warmed up. Um, as I told you before, it was 31 degrees out, and so his hands are getting pretty cold. I'm gonna go ahead and speed the video up uh, now until we get down by the pond. Once we get down to the pond, I'll uh, do a little comparison. We can see what the difference is between a uh, red ear and a bluegill. Don't like bluegill. Oh yeah. So bluegill and you call them red? Red ears. Red so ears. Huh. Red ears will have a little red on the Yep. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, red ears get a little bit bigger. Yes, they do. Yeah. There we go. There's a good yeah. good exactly. comparison. Oh, yeah. okay. So this right Col here. A lot more color. Red ears are right. pretty. Yeah. So this right here is your bluegill. Yeah. Okay. And then your red ear. Yeah. As you can see, the the bands here they're oh, a little bit yeah. more sporadic. Yeah, a little prettier, yeah. and you got that little ear yep. right there. Yeah. And the bear and the and uh, bellies there yeah. will be always yellow. Oh, yellow. yellow. Sometimes they oh. call them uh, shell crackers. Shell crackers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Logan told us that these uh, fish were last year's hatch, so they should um, spawn next spring uh, when the water warms up and so that should produce a lot more forage for uh, the bass when we uh, we plan on adding the bass to probably uh, late next summer or early uh, fall. So here we are again back at the truck. Um, we got one more tank to unload. There's another thousand uh, bluegill red air in this last tank. So once this is done, he'll go ahead and add these to the pond and uh, that should be it for the day on all the fish. So as I said earlier on, that was uh, you know, over 2000 bluegill red air, uh, 300 catfish and you know, in my guess and, and probably Logan's and uh, you know, what they, what they say per pound, we're probably talking well over 15,000 uh, shiners and minnows. So that's, like I said before, that's gonna create a great forage base to uh, start off this new pond. And hopefully by next year when we add those bass, they're gonna have plenty of food to eat and they should grow pretty fast that first year or two. I just wanna thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoy these videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you don't mind. Um, I really enjoy doing these videos. Uh, you know, I got a lot of things to share. Um, also, I want to just you know share this experience of uh, taking this uh, raw piece of farmland and turning it into a dream property. So, if you want to follow along, like I say, hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, you'll never know you'll never know what I'll be videotaping. Um, I got all kinds of uh, hobbies I do, from uh, woodworking to wood turning to wood carving. You just never know. I might do a video on uh, that someday. But anyway, 
Um, thanks again and uh, have a great day.